<laughs> Surprise, it's me, Cisco Morrison. Here's what's coming up on Garden with Cisco. We've got some great plants for a shade container. Hey, we're finally at the time of year where we're outside redoing our pots. Oh, and finally. In hopes the warm weather will once again <laughs> yeah, come and we can come out and enjoy la. them. Whether you want bigger blooms or tastier veggies, we'll show you the right organic fertilizer for the job. You can't go wrong with Complete. It's an excellent, excellent fertilizer. It's our flagship, it's our original, it's the very first and the basic from which all of our other fertilizer blends came. This dish comes straight from the garden to your pasta plate. Eating your veggies should always be this fun. Plus, our plant pick is a spring classic you can't go wrong with. Hey, Megan, I'll do you a favor. I'll even dig wow. that today. How about that? I feel huh? honored. Am I a nice guy or, or what? what? Of course I do all the work all the time yes, anyway. Yes, yes. So. All this and some awesome art in a Tacoma Conservatory is coming up on Gardening with Cisco. I'm Cisco Morris. And I'm Megan Black. Welcome to Gardening with Cisco. We're at the W.W. Seymour Conservatory here in Tacoma today at Wright Park. Love this place. Megan, have <laughs> you seen the really strange critters lurking in all I, the plants? I noticed that one has its eye on you. Oh, man, those are the most <laughs> colorful pests I've ever seen. <laughs> I can't wait to check those out, but right now it is finally time to get those pots going. Not only for late spring, but early summer as well. Nurseries are stocked full of gorgeous plants. Most people think a shade pot is kind of drab and boring. No way, Jose. Check this out. I can't believe we're finally at the time of year where we're outside redoing our pots. Oh, and finally. In hopes the warm weather will once again <laughs> yeah, come and we can come out and enjoy la. them. But I love Cisco's trick. He has been shopping on the other side in the houseplant department. That's right. That's a trick people don't know. Yeah. You, you don't realize that a lot of tropical plants live under a big canopy in the forest, you know. And so you can plant these outside in the shade when our temperatures get That's a little right. bit warmer. And this is Feistic, uh, Ficus elastica. And Ficus elastica has a snail. Oh, la la, put the L squish on yeah. that guy. Yeah. And, and this plant is a rubber tree. Isn't that cute? Isn't that I cute? love his Here, flowers. I'll, I'll do a little on that. On his roots? Yeah, that's. Because they're kind of oh, hard. Oh, boy. Guy's been in here for a so, while. So, you all summer long can grow this rubber tree outside, but when yep. it becomes winter, you bring it back in for house Yeah. Plant. Okay, let's put that way in the back, Mika, because. Okay. Uh, uh, now we'll figure we're gonna fill the soil oh, wait, to wait. about here. Oh wait, wait, do we here. want some uh, fertilizer? Oh, did I not put that in there? You didn't put fertilizer in there. Wow. Okay. okay. And this is a big pot, so I'm using a good organic uh, flower food here. All right, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna see. Yeah, this is a, a little more for good luck. <laughs> You know what I love about organic fertilizer? We can't burn the plants. Okay. So it's just wonderful that way. There we go. Oh, we'll give you that. Okay. Okay. Let's this get is this great. guy in there. Pick his good side. Yeah. There we go. And then look at this orange. You know, I love these. I always call them tuberous, tuberous begonias. Oh, now yeah? they call them nonstop. Okay. Yeah, but they're tuberous begonias. How's and, that too low? Uh, yeah, That's a little low, low there. There okay. we go. Okay. Oh, look at that purple with that. Now I'm gonna put this. Right this in is center. lime ricky. Whoa. Oh lime this I love lime ricky. Wonderful heuchera. I've had lime ricky before. Oh uh, yeah. So I'll stick that guy right in there. Ooh, mama, look at that contrast. Oh my gosh. So are we oh yeah, I think right in there. So and leave enough space so we can get one of these grasses okay. between those two. This is called a chorus. And it loves shade. Oh, really? Yeah, and, and I love how... it probably stays green it, if it has the shade. It's evergreen, and it sticks out to the side. So uh, look at that effect. And where do you think we can get one in? Yeah, I th you know what? Let me move him oh, over. Or well, here, how oh, about right there? there? Okay. Oh, la, la. In between those. Yeah, there, there we, we go. go. Holy cat. And just like that, voila. Yeah, we got to add a little soil and a little water, and... Did look I tell at the color of these. Look at I that like match. that. Only a genius could have done this. Yeah, uh, you know what? I think you could keep you can keep your investment so far. You don't have to give it back. Oh, 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 she admits that it's the best one we've ever done.
So, Megan, we finally found out what these really cool glass critters are. They're made by young people at risk. They call themselves the Hilltop Artists. They are absolutely phenomenal. This exhibit will be on display here at the conservatory through May, and we'll see more of it throughout the show. I can't wait. Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from the W.W. Seymour Conservatory here in Tacoma. While the weather is finally starting to change a bit, it's warming up, plants are growing, it means you got to fertilize. That's right. And whether you want to have fantastic flowers or just green up your lawn, there is an organic fertilizer designed for whatever you need to do. It's a sure sign of spring. The sudden urge to really pay attention to those three little numbers on bags of the brown stuff. I don't know what you guys have been doing lately, but I've been fertilizing because spring is here. Tina Peterson of Hendrikus Organics agreed to give us a lowdown on which of their fertilizers works for what. If you're a generalist and those NPK numbers intimidate you, here's your stuff. Complete is our all-purpose, so if you're in doubt and you're not really sure Right, you can't go wrong with Complete. It's an excellent, excellent fertilizer. It's our flagship, it's our original, it's the very first and the basic from which all of our other fertilizer blends came. If you want to specialize a bit, try this one for natives and certain fruits. My second favorite one that I'm using in my vegetable garden a lot is Organo Bloom. This is a great, great fertilizer for the acid-loving plants. I use it on my tomatoes. We use it on blueberries, raspberries, any of the berry family. Of course, your ornamentals, you've got rhodes, azaleas, heathers. Any of the acid-loving plants love this fertilizer. Is having the greenest lawn in your neighborhood what you want? Seasons is a really interesting fertilizer. When we first brought it out, I, we don't have a large bag here, it has our lawn chair and, our, and all this gorgeous turf because Seasons truly has been our turf fertilizer. It's an 824, it's great for turf, great for lawns. But at the same time, it's great for vegetables and heavy feeders. Heavy feeders like cukes and eggplants love this stuff too because it's got that nitrogen boost. Need a bigger boost for leafy greens? This stuff has so much nitrogen it'll combat beauty bark addiction. Now spring nitrogen is another interesting fertilizer and we developed this because of the numerous landscape maintenance companies that wanted to get off chemicals and go organically but they were terrified about the spring lawns of their clients not being green when they made the switch so we decided to have a transition fertilizer. Really into roses? Bouquet's not so secret ingredients are bone meal, alfalfa meal and kelp. The gardeners at Emerald Down swear by this stuff. Well my pink bag here, I love this bag. This is bouquet. This is a fantastic product for roses, bulbs and all flowers. It's a great, great product. Finally, this soil enhancer is for replenishing stressed soil. It can be added any time of year. Another thing that soil enhancer is great for is container gardens because container gardens are, it is automatically because it's contained, it is a more of a stressed environment for the plants and the soil. So soil enhancer is a great benefit for your potted plants. So no matter what you grow, customizing the fertilizer you put in the soil and keeping it organic will make your plants healthier and happier. This is really critical for all your planting. The difference that you're going to get, you put start right on the roots, you add Humagic with your fertilizers, your veggies are going to have incredibly high nutrition, your plants are going to be flowering and producing well, you're going to have less disease, you're just going to have a healthier, happier garden with this complete combo. Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco. Megan, do you feel like someone's watching us? Always. Oh, yes. la, la. You know, this W.W. Seymour Conservatory in Tacoma uh -huh. has 3,500 panes of glass. Wow. Not counting all these other ones that we're <laughs> seeing here today. It's over 100 years old. It is absolutely gorgeous, too. Such a great refuge from a nasty Northwest day. <laughs> That's for sure. Hey, I heard you got to whip up something with Lindia. Oh, la, la. Pasta Primavera. It's what you cook when all the greens are fresh in spring and you've got a major craving for pasta.
Well, Lynn, if I didn't know better, I'd think we're doing something with greens and veggies today. You're a genius. <laughs> That's yeah. me. You know, I literally took a tour through the produce department, and it's that time of year. I, if it was fresh, organic, and local, I got it. Oh, and so wow. we're going to make a pasta primavera. Oh, la la. Yeah, I know. And just All right. celebrate. Springtime and, pasta. Exactly. Okay, so I wanted to show you real quick just a, a couple of little cuts that I did for these, because when I make the cuts for this pasta, I like it to be, you know, kind of long diagonal cut but kind of thin slices so it gets distributed evenly uh -huh. through so for instance with the asparagus what I do is I start at the tip and I just put my knife at a pretty sharp angle and then I cut slices off at a diagonal like that oh, cool. and for one thing when that cooks up it's so pretty in the dish yeah. and it, it makes the asparagus cook nice and evenly Ooh, and so pretty. then to sort of mirror that same size and shape with the peas I just uh, these little snap peas I just cut them in half at a long uh -huh. diagonal and I love it to just sort of do the sort of, you know, see the little oh, yeah. bit of little peas in there. Really Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Yep. Okay. We're all about pretty, aren't we? Uh, oh, we are. Okay. It's all presentation. Uh, yes, exactly. Shall we cook? Yeah, all right, let's, let's cook. Go. Okay, so I'm going to start with some extra virgin olive oil. All righty. Then you've got some leeks and some garlic. It's going to be kind of a hot pan, so get ready. Okay, all in right. you go, guys. So these could be shallots or cipollini onions, whatever you like. Fresh garlic. And we'll just go ahead and add the um, other vegetables now to this, and all it'll right. all kind of saute together so at the same time. we got some nice peas yep. there. Now, those are some snow peas, and then we've got some sugar snap peas. Mm, oh, boy. If you've got English peas, you can shell those and throw them in oh, there. Oh, look at and that. And our beautiful that asparagus. That is so beautiful. Know, isn't this fun? Oh, here's my kind of green right here. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, never forget the bacon. I did that just for you, my dear. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, A little boy. bit of pancetta or bacon, if you like. And then that's all we're going to add right okay. now and we're going to turn this heat up and we're just going to stir fry these around until they're crisp tender and bright green oh boy So now that we've got the peas and the asparagus just about perfectly done, a little yeah. al dente, now we're going to add the more tender greens. So arugula, a little uh, fresh arugula. baby arugula. I, love arugula. I know, I know, so do I. You and I have so very easy similar. easy to grow, too. I know, and it just tastes so good. And then a little baby spinach. Mm, and you'll notice ah. we're just putting it in whole leaves, okay, because oh, it's okay. going to wilt down yeah, really then. nicely. And then right. a ton of fresh basil. Okay. Ooh, that smells yeah, good. Yeah, isn't that fabulous? Oh, boy. And then I've got a little bit of fresh goat cheese over there. Oh. Oh, yep. man. Go ahead and just throw that in. Ooh. And then what I'm going to do right now, Cisco, is turn the heat off. I don't want to cook these oh, anymore. Okay. And then we're going to get our fresh pot of um, pasta. We're going to drain it out and just toss it right into our oh, yeah. grains. Is that Good fun? Idea, yeah. Okay. All right. I'll get that drained. We'll be right back. Oh, boy. Now, the key to working with pasta is you don't want to refresh this under cold water. You don't want to, you know, um, because it rinses all the starch off. Uh -huh. So if you put the wonderful kind of starchy, sticky al dente pasta in there, all the yummy uh, sauce sticks to the, the molecular Ooh, okay. structure of it. Oh, that sounds I think good. that's going to be enough. <laughs> and I tell you what, let's give another little drizzle okay. of extra virgin olive oil. And you know what, Cisco? I was going to put some Alfredo sauce on this, but I don't think we need it. I do don't you? either. I oh, think that man, is absolutely gorgeous, good. just the way it is. Boy. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. We'll get it all nicely distributed, and then we'll shave some fresh parmesan mm. on top when we get ready oh, to eat. Man, I think you're ready for a bite. I okay. am ready okay, let's for go. a bite. <laughs> The toughest part about this job is having to taste all this stuff. Oh, la, la. Ah, ah. Uh, okay, you know what? We'll start there. There's, I think we got a little bit of all the good stuff oh, in yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. And then let me give you a little fresh parmigiana. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, that's the fun. Ooh. Oh, now that is the, okay. the coup de resistance there right are. there. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, it smells so good. Yeah. Okay, one twist okay, just to make sure it's on there. Okay. I made it as long as possible just to... <laughs> I did it! <laughs> what can you do? You can't look pretty when you're no, eating pasta. No. Oh, man, I gotta try one more bite. Okay. Mm -hmm. Get some of those yummy veggies. Does your mother know you eat like that? Oh, la, la, I couldn't.
couldn't help it. It was so good. Holy cow. Now, Lynn says that in Primavera pasta, uh-huh. anything is fair game. So any green you like, you could put in Brussels sprouts, for oh, instance. Just load them up. <laughs> Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco. It's time for our plant pick. And sometimes the good old standard is just what the doctor ordered. And this time we're talking hostas. Yeah, we're going to reintroduce some of our favorites. And let me tell you, you got a shady garden. This is a must-have plant. I love a hosta. Dark, shady, moist spot. And yeah. look at the variegation in this baby. Oh, it's beautiful. It's called Patriot. Patriot, ah, oh, neat. And you know, th- that's what I love about a hosta like this with all the white in it. Yes. It'll stand out in the darkest spot you've got, and they love dark shade as long as there's moisture. Yes, and you have pointed out the best spot for oh, yeah, we the got gardens. A- right behind this Japanese maple. Look oh, at how it's going to brighten man, up that. Yeah, that's going to shine like a neon light the in there. The bold foliage. Okay, Megan, I'll do you a favor. I'll even dig wow. it today. How about that? I huh? feel honored. Am I a nice guy or, or what? what? Of course I do all the work all the time yes, anyway. Yes, so. yes. <laughs> I'll pop this baby out. All uh, right, great. Oh, little work on the roots there. Not too bad. <sighs> these, the only thing, only problem I think I've had with these is the old slugs seem oh, to like yeah, them. Oh yeah, man, they're a magnet for slugs. You know, the darker blue the color, the less the oh, slugs eat them. I didn't know that, but the darker blue, the less it's gonna it, light up that dark spot. It wouldn't have worked spot. here, we gotta <laughs> use this guy. Hey, I think I'm ready for that, Megan. And I, okay, I think we okay. want him like that, because his leaves right, look better yeah, that way. Tell me how it looks when I get it in here. Perfect uh, Yeah, I think, that's, I think that's about good right there. I okay. love the way the sun dapples that variegation. Me too. Boy, is this going to look nice here, and uh, you know, not every plant would live in here. It's, you know, you plant the wrong plant, it's just going to die in the dark like this. But I've had great luck with hostas over the years. And to solve the slug problem, a little sluggo uh, out there would never hurt. Good idea, boy. I don't have a ton left, but, so that'll help. Sluggo's a great product, safe it for is. the kids. Yep. Just sprinkle a little bit around there. So any slug bait that's got iron phosphate, those are safe ones. There's okay. a few products. Okay, and also Great. Sluggo, you really need to kind of give him a little shot of moisture that's right. as well. right, it works so, a lot better when you moisten it down. And well, water on him dry in. nights, it doesn't always work if you don't wet it down. And look at how pretty wow, that, that is. that is beautiful with this Japanese maple and this golden cypress here. You know, Woo, mama. it's a common plant, but I am telling you, it lives year after year. And look how gorgeous that is in a it, shady spot. And it'll even have lavender flowers sticking up pretty soon. Those will be spectacular, too. I'm liking it with some of the blues that I've got in the garden going. Wow, perfect choice for this don't spot. Don't forget your hostas. Yeah, don't Tried forget your and slug true. And your slug <laughs> Okay, Megan, slugs are not the only critter that eats hosta. You do? No, no, but in <laughs> Japan, they eat the young shoots. It's called urui, and uh, they're delicious, I guess. I think you ought to try it. I think you should try it. I think you first. <laughs> ah, ah, Megan, look at all this cool stuff they have. So that one is for sale. That's a flamingo. Then you'd have to get rid of your pink flamingos out of your yard. <laughs> oh, you it wise guy. It would be in competition. <laughs> Let's see what it costs. Only 200 bucks and it's still for sale. I think you're going for it. I'm going for it. Oh, boy. Hey, maybe we can find some more cool stuff. I think you can. And if not, a hosta to nibble on. (laughs) Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye, everybody. See See ya.